By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have the finals, finally the finals of the Urborg Lions Plains Pillage Old School Magic The Gathering Tournament in Dusseldorf, Germany. So if you've been following the channel then the last six weeks you've watched uh, matches from this tournament every Tuesday I bring you an update and this is going to be the last episode in those series. We're in week number seven and you have reached the final so congratulations if you've seen all the action so far. If not, you can check the description below and um, you can probably find a link to the playlist and you can just watch all the other episodes back. But now we're in the finals, baby, and <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to be something because we've got two beautiful decks here. So the first deck I've called Five Color Good Stuff, even though there's only one white card in it and two black cards. So if you know a better name for it, please let me know. And it is the deck of Avert. He is a Dutchman and he's going to play against Michael. Now we've seen Michael play a lot with this deck. Yeah, he played a lot on stream, which is great because it's a beautiful deck. It's basically an Urnum Ganon deck with a twist. At, at first I called it, uh, I believe, just white green uh, blue aggro control, which is which is what it is. It's not wrong, but when I look at it again and when I see the matches, it is really more an Urnum Ganon deck with a twist. Now what the twist means, I'm going to discuss in the deck deck. Just, uh, talking about that, if you want to go straight to the action, if you think, listen, I know these decks, I just want to see the match, you can check the description below and there you will find a timestamp that reads MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the action. And here we are going to continue with the decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Avert that we haven't seen yet on the stream. So I'm really looking forward to commentating this match for you. Let's have a look at his deck first. Five color, good stuff. And here we see the deck of Avert. And as you can see, all the colors in this deck are represented. But of course, the main colors in this deck, let's just do a like, quick count. I'm uh, counting six, seven, eight green cards. I'm counting three, five, seven, ten blue cards. I could be wrong. No, 11 blue cards. There's a Mahamoti Jin in there. And I'm counting seven red cards. So I guess blue is kind of the main color. And then there are two black cards and one white card. Now, this is really kind of a good stuff deck. It's got all the goodies in here. We see Ancestral Recall, of course. We basically see all the power cards and all the restricted cards, almost. Uh, and that makes this deck very good. We don't see, oh, we do see a Black Lotus. I want to say, to say we don't see a Black Lotus. No, we do see a Black Lotus. We see five Moxen. Uh, we see the blue power. We see the restricted cards. Uh, we see a Mana Drain. We see a Mind Twist. We see Demonic Tutor. We see Balance. Uh, Chaos Orb, which is also a restricted card. We see Brain Geyser, which is incredibly strong in this format. And then it's going to be interesting um, because he's, the choices that he has made. So he's playing with three Suchis. He's playing with one control magic. He's, he's actually playing with a lot of one-offs. And I think the result of that decision uh, is making the deck very flexible. So he's playing one control magic. He's playing one crumble. He's playing one shatter. He's playing one ice storm. So that's quite interesting, right? And what you have to realize, all those one-offs get better because of the demonic tutor. They're basically silver bullets, right? And the demonic tutor can look them all up. So in certain situations, these cards can be lifesavers. And that um, Demonic Tutor means that he basically has two. He has two chances. And then, of course, he also plays with the Regrowth, which is a great card. So he can also get one of those Silver Bullets back. So that's quite interesting. Uh, he can ramp up very, very quickly, of course, because of all the Mox and the Soul Ring and the Black Lotus. So that means he can have a very quick start. That's probably why he's not work, uh, playing with, for example, a, a Savannah Lions. Because... That is one white. Okay, you get a 2-1 body for one white, which is pretty good. I mean, Michael plays with it. But is it really good when you have that much ram going on? I mean, before you know it, you have way more mana than just, just one measly planes. So why would you uh, settle for such a small creature when you can easily get four mana and you can play an Urnum Jin or you can play a Suchi? Uh, one of the things, the reasons that he's put a Suchi in uh, in his deck, by the way, is because it's great against, of course, Terror, but also, more importantly, against the Abyss. So the Abyss doesn't get rid of the Suchi. So that's one of the reasons why he's playing Suchi over other creatures. For example, a Setch Troll. Now, a Setch Troll wouldn't really work very well in this deck because he has so little black sources. But, of course, he could then, when he plays with Setch Troll, 
make the decision to add more black sources to his deck. You know, that kind of changes, of course, the whole composition. But he's really chosen for Suchi. And I think that Abyss is one of his main reasonings um, to go with that. And of course, we're playing according to Swedish rules. So that means that you don't get that four mana burn if Suchi gets killed. Um, interesting here, of course, he's playing with three counter spells and a mana drain. So basically with four counter options, he's playing with four lightning bolts. A card that I think is very important in this deck as well because of all that ramp and those cheap powerful creatures, relatively cheap of course, I mean uh, a 4-5 for four, 4 is, is very cheap in this format, um, that we see two Sylvan Libraries. I think those Sylvan Libraries can be key because you want to keep you want to keep drawing cards, you want to keep putting pressure on the board and the nice thing is that he's also playing with a lot of direct damage. It may not look like it because you're kind of your eye tends to go to other cards but Look at that second row from the left. We see four lightning bolts, two side blasts, and two disintegrates. There is a lot of power, and he's not playing with swords to plowsiers. Usually, a lot of decks, including Michael's, have swords to plowsiers. That's a fantastic card, but there is a big downside, and that is that you're giving your opponent life. So then, when you have an aggro strategy and you have swords to plowsiers, those two things they don't always match. But in case of um, of, of Averett. It is not a problem, you know, He's he doesn't have that. He's not playing with swords, he's not relying on swords. He's relying on his counter magic or direct damage to take creatures out, or even better, steal them with control magic. A good control magic backed up by a counter spell can be a decider as well, even though he only plays with one control magic. It's one of those silver bullets that out of nowhere can kind of decide the game for you. Very strong, very solid deck, and of course, yeah, for uh, Mishra's Factories, you know, you see them in almost every deck in top eight. Um, let's go over to Michael's deck and have another look at it. And here we see the deck of Michael. So just a quick shout out to the Rhineland Avengers. That's his playgroup, Rhineland, a region in Germany. Really cool guy. Um, like I said, in the semifinals, this tournament was the first time that I met him. Very relaxed, very chilled dude. And also making the finals. Wow, man, what a great accomplishment. Um, for the people that haven't seen him in action yet, that probably means that you haven't seen the previous videos uh, that I've put on the channel where you could see Michael's deck in action at this tournament. So um, if you haven't seen it, it's really worth it. Check the description below and you'll find a link to the playlist and, uh, and you can check out all the other matches, including uh, Michael's deck performing in the quarterfinals and the semifinals. So that's quite nice. Um, so looking at his deck, really the, the, the base of his deck is that earn and get and strategy. So ramp up with your Lanor Elves, your Bobs, uh, you know, your, your, your jewelry, I would say. So the Moxon and the Black Lotus. Play out your big creatures and other creature threats, you know, Savannah Lines, uh, an early maybe turn two, turn three Urnum. And then as soon as you have uh, the possibility, play out that Armageddon, get rid of all the land and kind of smash your opponent because you have the bigger creatures. So that's right. That's the basics of Urnum Geddon. Now, the reason I've also called it aggro control in some of my descriptions is because I feel it's more than just that strategy. He's playing with two ICs. He's playing with an if biff. He's playing with a little bit of blue for, of course, blue power, but also two side blasts. So there is more going on, you know, and of course the Stormseeker that as you, if you've been following the previous matches, you know that I'm a big fan of that card and I think it's really nice to see Michael choosing to play this card over Mind Twist. I think it's, it's very cool. Um, and yeah, other than that, we see a lot of, you know, the usual suspects that I guess you kind of need in, in old school when you want to play uh, in the top eight. Not always, but you do see it a lot. Of course, the blue power, the restricted cards, regrowth balance, demonic tutor. And interesting here, Michael's playing with one Sylvan Library and Avery's playing with two. So that's going to be interesting to see um, how much of a part those Sylvans are going to play. And also we see Michael here, instead of having Lightning Bolts, um, he is playing with uh, Swords to Plowsiers, of course, because he's not playing with Red. So that's another interesting change in the decisions that they've made. So Avert is going for the Red, uh, the versatility of Lightning Bolts. Whereas, um, you know, Michael is choosing for Swords to Plowsiers, which actually can be quite versatile as well, because I've, I've seen many games where people play a Swords on their own creature just to give them an extra turn and then actually to win it. So it's it, playing a Swords on your own creature sounds ridiculous, but I've seen it happen so often and players won after that, that it's actually a valid strategy. And it makes, for me, it makes Swords to Plowsiers better because it's more flexible. I'm not saying it's better than Lightning Bolt, don't get me wrong, but it's 
it's really useful. It's something to keep in the back of your mind when you're looking at sword supply series. It's not just to kill a creature of the opponent. It's also a life gain spell for you if need be. I mean, how often does it happen that you need one extra turn to win the game? And if swords can give it to you, it's kind of like a time walk, right? Anyway, um, the rest of the list, we see a lot of usual suspects. I'm really hoping to see those two beautiful Sarah Angels hit the board. Always a big fan of those two cards, of course. And um, this is, yeah, this is it. So I suggest let's, um, let's quickly go to the finals and have a look at how this is going to end up. Who will win the Urborg Lions Plains Pillage? Oh, that's a mouthful. Tournament. Will it be Avert or will it be Michael? Let's go to game one. Game number one is about to start. Players here shuffling up. And uh, Michael on the right with the black sleeve. So he's playing the Urnum Ganon deck. And on the left, the five color good stuff deck by Avert with the white sleeves. And look at that. Michael taking a mulligan here, putting a card on the bottom of his library. So that means he's starting with six. There's the box. Let the games begin. Michael on the play here with, oh, look at that. Double mox and a Mishra's Factory. So that means he can start attacking next turn. Maybe he doesn't want to because there is a City of Brass. That means that there are some options here. Mox Ruby, past turn. Remember um, that Aford is playing with Lightning Bolts, a full play set. So, you know, animating the factory is very risky. He is going to do it though, thinking, hey, I've got two. I'm just going to attack. Already have to double mox. Look at that. There's a pump, and I guess there's no bolt by Avert. So that means he's going to drop to 17, playing a tropical island, passing turn again. Now he does play with three counter spells. And of course, um, the mana drain. So he does have two blue now, so that's absolutely an option. And maybe Michael wants to play an Urnum Gen, but looking at the double blue, so he just decides to attack. Will we see a Cyblast? There's the pump. And this is, of course, a difficult decision to make for, for Avert here because if he decides to use his mana to kill one of the factories, then all of a sudden Michael has an option to play something else. So there is a Strip Mine taking care of one of the factories. So that takes away a little pressure. We see a duel here and there is a Savannah Lines hitting the board. No Counterspell here by Avert probably looking for something bigger, or maybe he simply doesn't have a counter spell. And there we see the attack again. There is a crumble that's quite nice, because of course crumble gives life to the opponent equal to the casting cost, but Mishra's factory has no casting cost. So crumble is a very good answer to those pesky factories. And there we see a second city of brass and only three cards in hand for Michael. What is he gonna do? Take two damage from the city of brasses and what will Avert play out? There is a Suchi passing turn here. Both players playing with Urnum Jins, so that's quite interesting. So I don't expect these players to board in a city in a bottle. Tapping three here, there's a Cyblast taking care of the Suchi, and that means another attack. And you know, Avert's already at 10, which is pretty well done by Michael. Michael's still sitting on 18. There's another tap by the City of Brass, and there's one of those Urnums I think we're going to see a lot of Urnums in this final since both players are playing with it. Let's see, what can Michael do here? The 4-5 is kind of an issue. There is a Birds of Paradise. Of course, next turn. There's an interesting choice playing the Birds because that means that Avert can now give Force Walk to the Birds of Paradise and not to the Savannah line. I do think it's a good decision though because you need your mana. There is a Time Walk. So that means that, you know, the birds had summoning sickness, but now Michael's taking his extra turn. He can use the mana from the Birds of Paradise. Is he also going to play an Urnum Jin? That's kind of a question here. Tapping four. And, oh, there's an Armageddon. This is an interesting choice. He's probably thinking, I'm only losing one land, and my opponent, Avid, is losing three lands in that transaction. So it is a pretty good deal. There is an immediate new land from Avert, a City of Brass. Very interesting choice here, taking four damage here, pointing out that the Birds is getting Forest Walk. Michael gonna drop to 14. I wonder, a little shaky image by the way, but I wonder what Michael's gonna do here, playing another land, attacking for two here. And look at the life total of Avert already on seven. 
And that means that certain cards in his deck are just not as strong, you know. He's got um, the City of Brass. It's very tempting to use it, but I mean, you're on seven. There's a Mishra's Factory. That can actually be quite a good blocker for um, for Avert here. Another four damage. So we see Michael, is he dropping here to 10 or was he already on? Yeah, he's dropping to 10, okay. So he's gonna drop to 10 and now I'm curious, of course he's gonna attack with the lion and then will Avert animate his Mishra's Factory to use it as a blocker? Remember, it's still a summoning sickness so it cannot pump itself. And I think that's what they're discussing right now. If I were Michael, I would definitely attack with the Savannah Lion. And I don't think I would attack with the Lana or else. Then again, I don't know what's in his hand, of course. And these players are in the final, so I mean, they know what they're doing. He's looking at his hand again. I mean, he's pretty close to the victory. And remember, he can still use his Lana as a chump block. So let's see what's going to happen now. Attacking. And he's of course, has the birds as a chump blocker also. Is he going to take the two damage or will he trade? He does trade. And remember, this is not great for Avery because he's also losing a land. On the other hand, he's got that 4-5 still, the Urnum Jin. Is he going to play his Urnum Jin now? No, he's going to play a regrowth. Interesting. And he's showing his, showing his graveyard. Now he's going to make an interesting decision. What what will you take here? Yeah, so he's going to take the Psyblast. This is interesting. I wonder what his other card is in his hand. I mean, he can play the Psyblast. Then he'll drop to three. What is he going to do? He's on ten. Oh, man, this is an exciting first game. So we've got Averett on the left on seven. There's the side blast. That means he's gonna go to three, but also two damage for Michael. Michael's gonna drop to eight. He's gonna pass turn here. Tropical Island. Is Averett gonna steal this one from Michael? That is the big question. Michael now on four. He can attack with the Lanomer to deal one point of damage. Are we gonna see another? Tapping four. Oh, oh, there's a counter spell. <laughs> Oh, I thought Stormseeker is going to take the first game. That there is a counter spell. Does mean a damage here for Avert. Interestingly enough, oh no, he cannot attack with the Lunar, or else he needs it as a blocker. If Avert can now kill, I mean, remember, Avert is playing with Lightning Bolts. If he can kill the Lunar, or Elf, he's also playing with Disintegrates. He's got so many answers to this. He can now steal the game. Attacking here has to chump. Oh, man. Michael is so close here to the victory, but now I think it's going to slip away from him. He needs a really good card. Only one card in hand, drawing a second one. Remember, he doesn't play with... Well, he plays with two side blasts. Ah, oh, man. Sylvan Library. Is he going to get another turn from Avert? It is so extremely risky. Of course, he's going to try to chum block here with the birds. But remember, Avert is playing with four lightning bolts, two disintegrates, and a side blast. Two side blasts, perhaps, I forgot. But anyway, he's attacking here with the Urnum Jin. There's the chum block. That was as expected. And that also means that Avert hasn't found any... Also a Sylvan hasn't found any direct damage or else he would have finished the game. Now let's take a look. Can he find something useful? It's kind of hard to see there. I see one. I think that third card is a factory. So you can only use that to chump if it's a factory. I'm not quite sure. He's choosing another card. I haven't seen which one. And if Avert has a counter spell, there's a Savannah line. So that's definitely going to be a chump block here. And the trap in his hand is empty. Wow, 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 wow. This is very exciting. I still, I mean, I, I think Avert's going to win this one. He's got so many outs in his deck. And he's got the Sylvan digging for those outs. Remember, one removal card. He's not finding it. Okay, so that means one more turn. Wow. One more turn. I do see a Swords there. The problem here is there are two creatures on the board on the side of Avert now because of that factory. 
But he's on four, of course, so he can take a hit from the factory. Look at that, using it right now. And I think that's a good decision. You don't want to give your opponent another chance with that Sylvan to possibly dig up a counter spell and counter that source. So I think this is a good decision by Michael. Now, I do think it's still pretty much over because you're giving your opponent life. It's, it's his only choice, but now he's going from two to six. Now Michael's on four. And he's actually playing an Urnum and not attacking with the factory probably deciding a for that hey it's not lethal so why do it there is an if biff of free oh this is so nice if they a three three flyer with a built-in hurricane mechanic so that means everybody including avert can play one green and then it's one damage to every player and to every other flying creature and this is quite interesting because avert has three green mana potentially with that city of brass so if he uses the ruby to animate his yeah and, and it's it and this is game because he draws into another green source he can now pay four uh because of the if biff and deal four damage to every player and every flying creature that uh, means that michael dies because he is on four but what an exciting game one and michael you were so close and avert well done you really pulled that victory out of this one wow i really thought you were toast um but you managed to win game one so these players are now going to their sideboards and we'll catch up back up with them in game uh, number two game number two and uh michael then on the play after losing that first one now remember he did take a mulligan so let's hope for him that he doesn't have to take a mulligan it looks like avid already chose to keep his hand here keep his opening seven so he's going to be on the draw again and we know that Michael's deck can be quite quick, so maybe he can take advantage of being on the play here. Looking at his hand, is he going to take another, or did he already take a mulligan? That's why he's looking at his cards, deciding maybe what to put away. He already did, ah, again, a mulligan. Very unlucky here for Michael in the finals. Kind of forced to take two mulligans in a row here. So the question is, will we see a game number three that Michael will have to win this one, starting again with the Mishra's Factory? But look at that, Avert with a Lana, uh, sorry, I want to say a Lana Rare Elf. I wish it was a Lana Rare Elf. Uh, it's a Library of Alexandria, so that's a great start for him. There is a Savannah Lines for Michael, but I mean, things are all already looking pretty bad here for Michael, having to deal with that Library of Alexandria. And this, of course, is a great start here for, uh, for Avert who is really going to swim in cards because of that Loa. There, Michael drawing another card, finding a Tundra. And is he going to attack with the Lion? Going to tap it, maybe? Oh, he's going to animate his Mishra's Factory. So he's just going to play, play aggressively, which I think is a very good decision to make. You kind of want to make it difficult for Aver to keep cards in hand, and that's why it's a good thing to play aggressively. There's a Swords. So, yeah, he gains two from the Swords, go to, to, goes to 22, and then takes four damage from the Factory and the Lions. It's actually quite a nice play here from... Uh, oh, but look at this. What's going to happen here? Quite a nice play, I want to say, from Michael. But now we see a Black Lotus, an extra card drawn because of the Loa. Sack, and there is your Urnum Jin. And, uh, you know, this is great now for for Avery because he has that big blocker. There is another factory. Also tapping four. Will we see an Urnum? Oh, an Icy Manipulator. Of course, we saw that in his opener. So this uh, Icy can be quite important here for Michael. He can tap down and then attack full force. And with those two factories and the lines, he potentially has six damage on the board. But of course, we'll have to see how that's going to turn out. Remember, Avert has that Library of Alexandria, so he can keep just drawing cards, finding, you know, bolts, maybe a shatter, crumble, you know, find a solution to the uh, Icy Manipulator. And he's got a full grip of cards, so I am expecting him to do something here. But it looks like he's just passing turn. Very interesting. So he's going to draw, probably going to, if he has a land, he can play a land, animate both of his factories and keep one land open to use his uh, IC Manipulator. It looks like he 
is not finding another land. Is he now going into his combat? Probably going to animate one of the factories, pump it with the other factory. So attacking here for four. There we see an ancestral recall, maybe digging for a lightning bolt. It looks like he hasn't found one. So he's pumping. So five damage there. That's actually pretty good for Michael. So 13 for Avert, 16 here for Michael. Double Mox by Avert. He's probably going to declare attackers and then Michael will tap his Urnum Jin with the Icy Manipulator. And I mean, Avert has so many cards now, it's just ridiculous. I mean, he had the Library of Alexandria and an Ancestral Recall. That's just overkill. Look at that double Urnum. Interesting. And he still has a full hand. I mean, it's just crazy. Look at it. The Library of Alexandria is still untapped. Look at that graveyard of Avert, by the way. It's just ridiculous. Black Lotus, Ancestral Recall, and Mishra's Factory in there. And I do... Oh, we didn't see Michael using the Icy Manipulator in the end step? Wow, that is interesting. I really would have expected him to at least step down one of the Urnums. Why not? It's kind of free. Or, you know, at least step down a land of Avert. Very interesting here. I'm assuming he just forgot, or maybe not. So... One of them has Forest Walk, but there are no forests on the side of the table. So I think this is a misplay here by Michael. Or does he have another idea? No, I think this was just a misplay. Of course, he's been playing the entire day today. And for him, this is match number eight of the day after the five matches in the Swiss rounds and then the quarterfinals, semifinals, and now the finals. So these are pretty long days. And the thing is, you think your alliance has forest walk, so, you know, it's unblockable. But hey, look at the cards of um, of Avert. He doesn't even have any green source on the board. Well, I mean, he has a mox, of course, but he doesn't have a green land. I mean, he doesn't have a forest or a dual land with green. There's a regrowth on Ancestral Recall. Another time that he casts the Ancestral Recall. Yeah, this is just getting kind of crazy. Michael needs a little miracle. I think, you know, actually not a miracle. He needs balance. That would be a great start for him, actually. If he can just block with the Savannah lines, kind of get rid of his creature, draw into a balance. I mean, he's still on 16. He just has to buy himself some time. And the balance will also shut down the Library of Alexandria. Actually, balance is one of the greatest cards for Michael in this uh, current scenario. And there is a Chaos Orb to make matters worse. Probably going to flip on the Icy Manipulator. Of course, there is a, uh, a Lightning Bolt to make matters worse. So that means that he's got 8 damage already on the board. Of course, Michael can block with his factories. I'm not expecting him to. And there's a Disenchant in response to the activation. So at least that's some good news here for Michael. Now he wants to probably go into combat. So in response, he's going to block one of the Urnums. going to take 4. And that means he's going to drop to 12. But yeah, this is this is looking... Man, it's not looking great for Michael here. He definitely needs a balance. What else can help him? At least another creature. Maybe just an Urnum to block one of the other Urnums. I mean, if he has a land drop and an Urnum, then at least he can block both of the Urnums. Another option that he can do is block an Urnum on double factory and the factories pump themselves because then it's then the Urnum is being blocked by two 3-3s. Three, three, so it can only kill one of the factory. So basically you're trading a factory for an Urnum. But I mean, it's not great because look at the amount of mana Michael has. Only four mana. So that, that trick would cost him all his mana. So that's not, not ideal. Now let's see what he can do here. Tapping. Is he going to attack actually? That's interesting. So he is attacking. Pumping it even. So bring him on 10. I like it. <laughs> and passing turn. I really wonder what's in his hand then. Because this means he's he's going to take at least 6, I assume. Remember, he has 1 mana to activate. Ah, there's an Ice Storm. One of the factories. He has 1 mana to still activate his Icy Manipulator. 
So you can tap down one of the urnums. There is an attack here. So he's tapping one down, taking six. Going to drop to six. A lot of pressure here. If Avert can win this one, he is the champion of the Urborg Alliance Plains Pillage Tournament in Dusseldorf, Germany. He's so close, only six life points away from the victory. What can Michael still do? Is he again in chum block mode? We already saw that in game number one when he was so incredibly close to the victory. Or can he turn, turn this around? Like I said, one balance could make a world of change. So it's definitely worth it for Michael to kind of stick into this game. He hasn't lost yet. He has to try to make this happen. There's another Mishra's factory. This doesn't help for Michael. Attacking again. And is he gonna, he can now pump it. Has to block. And I assume he's used his uh, Icy Manipulator for one of the Urnums, taking two damage. Remember, he's, it looks like he's on five now, but he's actually on six. Yeah, exactly. He's going to go down, but actually, Avert could have pumped. Oh, Cyblast, it's over. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to say Avert forgot to pump the factory with his other factory, but he didn't have to. He had that Cyblast. I think game one was fantastic, and game two, it was a little bit one-sided because of, of course, that early Library of Alexandria, and things only got worse from there. We saw two Ancestral Recalls cast by Avert in total, and it, it was just too much. I think, like I said, I think I think a balance could have saved him, uh, but it didn't. And I just want to say, Avert, congratulations on this victory, well-earned victory. Uh, your deck was the best deck. You were the best player here in Dusseldorf, so congratulations. And also to Michael, the runner-up. Michael, I really enjoyed looking at your deck. It's really a new light on the Urnum Geddon. So thank you for bringing it to the table. And I would like to thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by liking, leaving a comment, clicking the notification bell and become a subscriber. If you're not subbed yet, that really, really helps. And you can also sponsor the show financially by becoming a patron on Patreon. So there's probably a link popping up right now. So click on that info card and have a look at my Patreon page and see if it's something for you. I'm um, talking about that. Let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the amazing, fantastic, super cool patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Ik het als ik het als zomba kan zien.